So this video is going to give you a introduction to DiadFit, which is a new piping tool for fitting spectral data specifically associated with CO2 and water in melting fusions. So this was developed at UC Berkeley, funded by NSF and the Rose Hills Foundation by myself and Charlotte DeVitra, who is a postdoc here. So what was the motivation behind developing this tool? It has become increasingly apparent since 2014 and 2015, when Margaret Hartley and Lowell Moore had their seminal papers, that melting fusion vapour bubbles contain a lot of CO2. But yet most literature studies have only measured the CO2 in the water in the glass. So these bubbles are really, really important. And we can quantify the amount of carbon that's in these bubbles using Raman spectroscopy. So the bending and stretching modes of the CO2 molecule produce these two distinctive peaks. And the distance between these two peaks, which we call the Fermi dyad, is proportional to the density of CO2. And if we know the density of CO2 by mass balance, we can get the mass of CO2 in the bubble and then convert that to an equivalent ppm in the glass. So if we look through the literature since this discovery in 2014 and 2015, we can see that like in many tectonic settings, more than 50% of the carbon is in the bubble. So it's very important that we start to optimise Raman spectroscopy measurements and specifically how we're fitting the different data. So another thing that is sort of applicable for this tool is fluid inclusions. So it's been shown numerous times in sort of the xenolith and the volcanology literature that the density of CO2 in a CO2 rich system can be a very good barometer. Traditionally, the density of fluid inclusions has been measured using microthermometry. Uh, recently, Kyle Dayton had a paper which showed that Raman spectroscopy has immense power for this. It is extremely quick. It requires minimal sample preparation. And as a result, it can be done very quickly after an eruption. And a lot of all of the data fitting for this paper was done in diet fit or an early version of it. So it really optimizes that peak fitting steps so that you can get depths as soon as possible after an eruption. So at the moment, people fit their Raman data in a wide variety of ways. So one option is FITIC, which is an open source tool. So what you basically have to do is you would click along and select the baseline and then you can drag peaks in. And this is fine, but it's relatively tedious. You have to do this for each spectra unless your spectra are very, very similar. So peak fitting using this takes hours per analytical session. Other options is you use origin based software. This is popular. The problem is the license for this costs several hundred dollars a year and it's not widely accessible to all research groups or they just have a single license on one lab computer. So we wanted to build an open source package to solve this problem and to really optimize the fitting step. So what can Dyad Fit do? Well, to start with, let's look at the workflow for fitting spectra with the Fermi Dyad. The first thing it can do if your instrument hasn't already is it can remove cosmic rays. Then once you've removed that, you can fit various background positions and various peak types to quantify the splitting between these diodes. There are then different workflows. If you've measured the spectral emission of neon throughout your run, you can automatically loop through and fit all of those neon lines. And you can like automatically build up a regression model of how your neon correction factor works against time. And then you can apply that to your spectral data. This is all done through Jupyter Notebooks where the workflows are laid out. So you really just need to press shift enter and do some slight tweaks for your instrument once and then you're good to go. The other thing it can do is many acquisitions in fluid inclusions and vapor bubbles contain secondary peaks. And this can tell you about phases on the wall of the inclusion. So diode fit can identify these peaks and it can also quantify their heights and their areas. And this means you can start looking at things like the ratio of say the SO2 peak area to the CO2 peak areas to try and approximately quantify molar proportions. And then the final thing it can do is using the method of Devitra et al, which will be published soon in Volcanica, you can quantify peak skewness for your peaks. And this can be really important if you've collected data below the critical temperature of CO2, so below about 30, 33 degrees-ish, then you will basically, if you have a high density inclusion that's liquid and vapor at room temperature, you'll get a mixed spectra. It can be really, really important to identify this because if you're just fitting a single peak, and your inclusions are of that density, you can end up with the wrong splitting, basically. Other things it can do is we have built in two CO2 equation of state models, so Spann and Wagner of 1996 and Sterner and Pitzer, um, 1994. And this allows you to do workflows like convert homogenization temperature to CO2 density for microthermometry. And you can loop through and do hundreds of calculations in a spreadsheet within milliseconds. 
You can also convert the density of CO2 to storage pressure or entrapment pressure at a variety of temperatures. So that is again using the equation of state to relate these variables. This is your common workflow for fluid inclusions once you've determined their density using microthermometry or Raman spectroscopy. Once you have that pressure, you can convert it to depth in the crust using different crustal density profiles. So you can use a constant density, you can use a two-step density, you can use a three-step density profile, or you can use a number of published density depth models from different tectonic settings. And then a final advance, which I don't think has ever been done before, is you can quantify your uncertainty in CO2 density. So that's by A, repeated measurements on the Raman or microthermometry. You then would estimate an uncertainty in entrapment temperature. This might be from your uh, thermometer you're using in your igneous system to guess when your olivine was trapped. You can propagate an uncertainty in your crustal density and then you can get an error bar using Monte Carlo simulations on the fluid inclusion pressure and the depth. And this can be really, really important to show that fluid inclusions have far smaller errors than other methods. The final thing it can do is there has been increased interest in using Raman spectroscopy to quantify water content in silicate glasses. So for a spectra collected, you can uh, quantify the area of the silicate region and the area of the water region and take the ratios between these. And then a new thing that it can do is you can collect spectra on melt inclusions at a certain depth in the crystal. And obviously that Raman spectra is currently a mix of the overlying olivine and the glass. So if you can take an olivine spectra right next to the melt inclusion, you can actually unmix those signals and that can allow you to get sort of a pure melt inclusion spectra on and sort of exposed, unexposed melt inclusion. So that can be pretty useful. How can you learn more? Well, there's going to be a number of YouTube videos put up on this channel. The other thing is you can check the read the docs page. So that's this URL here. You can see on the left hand side, there is a table of contents and it goes through lots of different workflows. So for any one of those workflows, you can click on them that you're interested in um, and you will get a Jupyter notebook up. You can either read through this or you can click this download view in MB viewer button. What this will do is it will launch it and you'll see a little download button on the right hand side there. You can download that and then you have the notebook which you can run on your computer and use it to fit your spectra. So keep an eye on the YouTube channel, keep an eye on the Read the Docs page and get in touch with any feature requests.